Hello YouTube, I'm carrying on from the previous video where, where I discussed uh, running uh, your lighting on 12 volts rather than the mains 240 and ways that it's been done and ways that we could do it. Now, I've written down some key points on this board here and I'm going to go through them because I find this quite interesting. Um, I'm going to start off with um, R Brown who was the first to comment on the video and he's, he's, he's actually done this system uh, quite well in uh, America and from the looks of it there is some things we can take from it so he, he says uh, he moved obviously the lighting circuits from his board and put them uh, somewhere else uh, 12 volt battery system uh, whereby he can swap it over to a 12 volt transformer if his batteries go flat that is quite interesting to me because you could do that you could get a large uh, 12 volt transformer and uh, have it on a double pole changeover switch so if there was a problem with your inverter or your 12 volt system, then you can swap it straight back to the mains without messing about. Now he uses low voltage, uh, low, low energy LEDs uh, in his house. And obviously being in America, the US, they have a 110 volt system where ours is 240, well say 240, two, two should really be 230. Um, they have bigger gauge cables for, for, for all the relative circuits. So dropping down to 12 volts is going to be less of a problem over in the States than it is going to be in the UK, where we use a smaller cable, normally a, a one mil rated at six amps. Um, next, I'll go back to uh, one big <laughs> SID, uh, where he just says, just disconnect and test in the real world, which is a good idea. Um, and I'd like to do that, but the problem I got is uh, the, the light fittings that I have in this house are, how can I put it, not the easiest to get into. Um, and uh, halogen lamps upstairs, uh, or halogen fittings with the due 10 lamps are not the easiest to take down, and I hate taking them down and then having to put them back up. If they're all, say, um, batten fittings or, or pen pendants, then I would uh, certainly test, uh, or maybe I have to do a test. I just involve testing R2, taking that as a rough number. Obviously, that that that's forgetting going to the switch and back. But just to get a rough idea, I might do a long lead test and just get R2, and uh, give us something to think about. Um, Sparky projects. Now uh, he he is raising some very interesting uh, problems that we <laughs> well. If you do swap it straight over to 12 volts uh, and you don't take into account, then you could be in for a shock. Well, not a shock, but... Right, so basically you use one mil twin on earth. Uh, but the problems we have in the UK is we run, tend to run things through the same joists. So you could have um, joists with one, one mil for lighting, 2.5 for sockets, 6 mil for your cooker, or you know, up to 10 mil for your shower. Um, if you're running 12 volts and 240 volts through the same joist, on the same path without them being uh, separated, then you're gonna uh, get inductance uh, from the mains uh, 240 AC or 230 AC going through onto your 12 volt line. Um, which might highlight another problem we've, I've had in the past is, is LED lamps uh, flickering or being dim the whole time they're off. I have actually encountered this in this house. I swapped over a uh, 50 watt halogen to a three watt uh, LED and uh, every five to ten seconds it would uh, flicker and flash and uh, on the forums and things people say oh cheap lamp cheap lamp it's quite for a good one that's not the case it is uh, in well inductance from, from other cables um, charging the capacitor in the LED to a point where it tries to come on uh, also raises the the big question of um, we've got to comply uh, with the wiring regulations in this country. Uh, I can't ignore this being an electrician myself, so I'm gonna to have to do something or have to find out if there's any information on running um, sort of dedicated 12 volt circuits in houses. Uh, obviously not having much experience in, uh, so let's say marine, like boats and caravan or any sort of off grid area, except for my experiments we could find some sort of compliance through uh, central battery locations which run emergency light systems but I'll have to have a good look into that and see 
uh, what I can come up with. Uh, da, 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 da. Ah, Torbatine. He has a really good idea, which is uh, running the 1mm lighting circuit on 24, 36, 48, you know, higher voltage supply, and then stepping down each fitting, which in theory is actually a good idea because then that way you'll get you'll be able to have a higher uh, capacity on your lighting circuit. Um, fittings like that would be quite easy to convert to something with a step down converter, and there are some really good um, 3 amp ones out on the market, solid state. Um, buck converters which would fit nicely in there and give you the capacity for 36 watts and keeping the uh, higher capacity on your lighting circuit but then again comes cost um, are you, you you want to save money here but firstly you're going to, have to spend out on buying uh, 12 volt lamps and things which can be a little bit more expensive than, than your generic mains lamps uh, unless you're buying from China land. Uh, but at say £3 a pop for each light fitting, you're not really going to cost yourself much more. And this idea is actually starting to stick with me. And uh, it might be a route that I follow. Um, Kibi 15 is uh, raising, the, uh, raising the problem that obviously 12 volts, 6 amp is 72 watts versus the mains 240, which is. 1.4 kilowatts. That is a lot of lighting. <laughs> I don't think many houses in the UK will surpass 1.4 kilowatts per lighting circuit. He says, what does he say? Uh, if you go for a smaller inverter, uh, it will minimise the standby current, which, yeah, yeah, I can, I, I believe, and and might be a route that I also follow. Um. Uh, da, 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 da. So to see if we comply with the R RCBO or RCD type device, we could uh, put that down line after the inverter and tie the neutral and earth uh, so the RCBO or RCD device actually trips. Which is something that I also want to want to try. I want to get my battery bank uh, with the inverter and uh, say put an earth stake in and, and see if it will allow an RCD or RCBO type device to trip. I want to experiment with that. I've got a couple of RCDs, RCBOs in the shed. Um, obviously in, in America then you're going to be calling them uh, GFCIs, I think. Um, also got to make sure the 12 volt side uh, is removed from the fuse board adequately and obviously uh, properly fused to dissipate the, the, the spark should the, or the arc should the uh, fuse blow. It also raises the, the problem that you might have to change your lighting fixtures. Um, not so much in this house. Most of these lamps in this house seems to be either uh, one, two, well, two fittings that take due tens upstairs, uh, BC, and the rest, except for the pendant down on on the lower landing, is all ES, which is, it doesn't seem to be much of a problem in the UK. I can still get hold of 12 and 24 volt ES lamps, LED and CFL quite cheap. Um, 2 volt E, some fixtures. Yeah, obviously you have more capacity if you run mains. Well, uh, brings me down to the last thing I want to do some more research in is basically DC versus AC. Um, there is less res resistance in a DC circuit than there is an AC circuit. I've got to do some research online to find out. Uh, something law, I can't remember what it is. I wrote it down and lost a bit of paper. Uh, DC, um, something to do with this less free there's uh, less or no frequency involved so it will uh, flow through the entire circumference uh, and area of the of the uh, copper core whereas AC tends to flow around the outside uh, of the core so you you end up getting higher resistance but I've got to do more research into that got to find out but I'm I'm I take everything on board that you said if you've got any more ideas or any more problems that we might um, come up against, then I, I'd be uh, willing to listen. Um, I've got to do some testing here, um, but from the board, and I haven't taken the lid off the board because it's not actually my fuse board yet, hopefully. Um, the bathroom appears to be on its own, so that shouldn't be much of a problem. Uh, upstairs, there's only three light fittings, and downstairs, there's only 
One, two, three, four, five rooms, that's uh, including one landing. Uh, one room is never on, one light is never used, so three rooms, uh, three, five lamps, five, five lights, that's two wall lights and three fittings on the ceiling. Um, so yeah, it could be done in this household within reason, but we're going to have to pay special attention to um, this problem that we might occur, and also whether we can get uh, enough light into the room as it is. So yeah, I'm uh, really getting interested in this. I still haven't got any pictures from the other Sparky who's actually done this in his house. He's kind of gone AWOL from the forum. Um, but yeah, uh, I'm, I'm definitely interested in trying this out, just to see if we do get the problem here. I'm definitely interested in trying this out. And I'm definitely interested in using the small inverter method. So it might be a case of we try each different method and uh, in the real world, as Big Sid says, figure out what the problems are. Yeah. So yeah, thank you for watching. This video has gone on way too long. Just me babbling along. Let us know if you thought of anything else, and I'll see you in my next video. Cheers.